Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Sick Money, where we discuss all things related to finance. Today's topic is on performance attribution, and we're going to use the Brinson Fashler model to decompose our excess returns. But we're also going to compare it to a previous model we discussed, which was the Brinson Hood v one. So let's go into the key learning outcomes for this episode. We're going to outline the formulas needed for the Brinson Fashler model. We're going to le- uh, teach you how to decompose the excess fund returns into components via the Brinson Fashler model. We're going to compare and contrast the Brinson Fashler to the Brinson Hood b model. Then just wrap up with some final thoughts. So let's look at the formulas for the Brinson Fashler uh, model. Uh, they're pretty much the same. The only key difference here is the allocation effect. Um, so this would be uh, the weight of the sector minus the uh, weight of the benchmark, uh, weight of the fund for the sector minus the weight of the benchmark for the sector. Uh, and then you would times that by uh, the benchmark return for the sector minus the overall benchmark return. Whereas if you did the Brinson Hood v model, it would just be um, the fund's uh, weight to the sector minus the benchmark uh, weight for the sector times the return of the benchmark for that sector. So there are some key differences, here, but we'll discuss it quickly now, but then we'll cover it again later on. So effectively, in the Brinson Hood v model here, If you are overweight uh, a sector and the sector return is positive, uh, then you will have a positive allocation effect. Likewise, if you are underweight a sector and the benchmark return for that sector is negative, you get a positive allocation effect. Now, if you are underweight a sector but the return for that sector uh, for the benchmark is positive, then you're going to get a negative allocation effect. Or if you are overweight to a sector, but the benchmark weight for that sector is negative, you'll get a negative allocation effect. Whereas the Brinson of Fashion model has a bit of uh, an issue uh, with the way that it is uh, decomposed. And this is mainly because one, what they're trying to say is if a fund manager is overweight a sector, the sector return has got to be greater than the overall benchmark return for it to be a positive allocation effect. And also, I guess, if you are underweight a sector, for you to get a positive allocation effect, that sector return is going to be less than the benchmark overall return. Um, So effectively, what they're trying to say is here is that um, you need to overweight to sectors that are outperforming the benchmark or underweight to uh, sectors that are underperforming the overall benchmark a return. So let's get into some calculations of, of how to do the Brinson fashion model. So look, we've got all these returns here. Um, so we've got portfolio returns, benchmark returns for the sectors, overall uh, return for the portfolio, overall the benchmark, we've got an outperformance of 2.06% uh, over the one year. And we've got some portfolio weights for the benchmark uh, for the portfolio weights and benchmarks for the sectors. So let's calculate all this. And it's pretty simple. So for the allocation effect, if we go equals, um, and let's take the communication services sector. If we take the portfolio weight of 12.3%, minus the benchmark weight of 7.5% for the communication services. And then we'll close the bracket there, and then we're going to times that by, apologies here, and then we're going to times it by 
the benchmark return for the communication services minus the overall benchmark return. And I'm just going to fix this and then we'll get a 0.2 allocation effect. So effectively, uh, we've overweighted the communication services sector of 4.8%. And because the benchmark return for communication services is greater than the overall benchmark return, uh, it's a positive allocation effect. So we've had an overweight to a sector that's out before, well, that's returned a greater return than the overall and then we get a 0.2% allocation effect. If we drag that down, we'll get all the numbers and we'll get an overall 2.22% allocation effect. Now let's calculate the selection effect. So to calculate that, we're going to take the communication sector again. So we get the portfolio return for the communication service sector of minus 1.1%. And then we're going to minus the benchmark communication services return of 11.3%. And then we're going to times that by the benchmark weight of 7.5% for communication services. And that gives us uh, a 0.93% selection effect for that sector. And then we drag it down and get all, the, all those there. It's a minus 0.66 overall. And then for the interaction effect, as you'll see, we need that because this, these two numbers add up to 1.56%, but we need to get to the 2.06. So let's do the interaction effect, which is for the communication service sector, we will take the portfolio weight of 12.3% minus the benchmark weight of 7.5%. And then we're gonna times that by um, the portfolio return of minus 1.1, minus the benchmark return of 11.3 all for the communication services and that's a no, minus 0.6 percent interaction effect and then we'll just drag that across for all the other sectors so overall we get here these will add up to 2.06 let's just double check that by summing these all up and then showing the numbers so total effect here as you can see these two numbers are the same So let's compare and contrast these models. Um, as you can see, you know, the allocation is 2.2 here, and it's 2.2, that all the numbers are the same. It is just, in reality, if I turn it, the differences all come here, but the, there's no difference in the total. And that's all because we've added this, uh, overall benchmark return into the equation. So the, the key difference here is that um, obviously with the Brinson Bauer model is that if you have an overweight to a positive, uh, overweight to a sector that has a positive sector return, you're going to get a positive allocation effect. So you can see it here, you were overweight communication sectors and the uh, benchmark return for the community is 11.3. Um, but in the Brinson B Bauer model, you need to say, let's say you want your overweight to a sector, that sector return has to be greater than the overall benchmark return. Otherwise, it's not a positive allocation effect. Um, so if you have a positive here and a negative here, you're going to get a negative. So that's the key uh, difference. So <clears throat> let's take materials as a key example here. So if we highlight this, in our case, we don't have any allocation to uh, materials, but effectively we are there for underweight um, the uh, sector. Because the sector has a positive return of 4.7%, in the Brinson Hood B bar model, you're going to get a negative allocation effect of 0.12%. But what some people have a problem with this model is to say, actually, look, my manager has underweighted 
a sector that has a lower return than the overall benchmark return. So therefore, sh this should be a positive allocation effect because he's done a great thing here or she's done a great thing here of allocating, underweighting a sector that has a lower sector return than the than the uh, average, the overall, sorry, benchmark return. And we can see here, when you use the Brinson Fashler model, that um, takes that into consideration and resolves that issue that many people have with the Brinson Hood BVAL model. So if we look here, we have a positive allocation effect rather than in here, we have a negative. Um, so we've got an underweight to materials, but because the uh, the return for the material sector is less than the overall benchmark return, you get a positive allocation effect. So we've got a negative here, and then we're going to times it by another negative to get the positive allocation effect. And a lot of people like this way of doing things or this model because the manager here is clearly underweight a sector that underperformed the overall benchmark return. So that would be a positive allocation effect. And therefore, as you can see, because the selection effect formula is the same and the interaction effect formula is the same, there's no differences. The only difference is here where you take into account um, that your uh, the sector return versus the overall benchmark return into the equation. So let's wrap up with some final thoughts in here. Um, it's up to you which uh, model you prefer, um, and it depends on the situation, where which one you want to use. Um, but I'd just like to add that return attribution is just, you know, uh, one way to analyze um, the returns of your fund um, or your portfolio. Um, there are other methods uh, to analyze uh, performance. Um, and we're here, we're just looking at the returns. So we're missing out the whole return side of the equation and all the other qualitative effects um, that we're missing here as well. Um, so it's a great starting point to do a return attribution, um, but in terms of performance analysis, there's a wide range of uh, analysis you can do to unveil a lot of information uh, and allow you to correctly select the funds uh, that are, you know, the best uh, within the industry and also have an edge. Uh, you know, and that matches their philosophy and the investment process to the actual returns that come out. And it's a way for you to dig deeper when you're looking at the returns, um, whether you're looking, you know, where they're investing, how that uh, the returns are linked to how the team is set up and so forth. Uh, there's lots of aspects to this. So uh, we're just going over very lightly here. Um, but, you know, learn the basics and then, you know, learn some more things to layer on. Uh, and the more you learn, uh, the greater your NASA will be, the more you understand uh, and the more likely you'll select uh, the better funds out there um, rather than the, the bad funds. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so let's just go over the learning outcomes which we've taught you. Um, you know the formulas for the Brinson Fashler model. To, uh, you now know how to decompose the fund returns via the Brinson Fashler model. You know the key differences uh, between the Brinson Fashler and the Brinson Hood Bebauer model. And you know my final thoughts on this. Um, so that comes to the end of the video. I appreciate you watching this. Uh, if you did like it, uh, please hit that like button. And if you want more videos like this, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.